Two bomb explosions occurred during a memorial event for Qasem Soleimani, a high-ranking general in the Revolutionary Guard, tragically resulting in nearly 100 fatalities. ISIS has claimed responsibility for this devastating incident. However, Iran has pointed fingers at Israel and the United States, alleging their involvement. In response, Iran has issued a stern warning preparing for what they call revenge. This development significantly dims the prospects of a thaw in relations between Iran and Israel, a hope many countries cherish. Historically, Iran and Israel shared a period of harmonious relations. Together with the United States, they opposed the Soviet Union's efforts to expand its influence in the Middle East. In fact, Israel even had a diplomatic mission in Tehran from 1948 to 1978. Moreover, Iran was the second country, after Turkey in 1950, to recognize Israel just a year after its establishment. But now, their relationship seems as incompatible as water and oil. In terms of the history of relations between Iran and Israel, there have been several phases. Initially, there was a period of friendship between Israel and Iran, lasting from 1947 to 1979 during the reign of Reza Shapalevi, notably following the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, Iran was the second majority Muslim country, after Turkey, to acknowledge Israel as a sovereign state. State. However, everything changed when Mohammad Mossadegh became the Prime Minister of Iran in 1951. He pioneered the nationalization of the country's oil industry and severed ties with Israel. But this shift was short-lived. In a dramatic turn of events, Mossadegh's government was overthrown in a coup orchestrated by British and American intelligence agencies in 1953. This coup restored the Shah to power, reinstating a loyal ally to the West. In the aftermath of the six-day war between Israel and Arab nations, Iran was one of the first countries to step in and assist Israel in its recovery efforts. Iran became a major supplier of Israel's oil needs. In a testament to the friendship between Iran and Israel, a significant monument was established, the Eilat Ashkelon Pipeline. This monumental oil pipeline, stretching approximately 124 miles, was built to transport Iranian crude oil to the Mediterranean Sea. The trade relationship between the two countries flourished rapidly. Israel's national airline operated direct flights between Tel Aviv and Tehran. Moreover, Iran and Israel embarked on extensive military projects, though these initiatives were often shrouded in secrecy. However, the landscape dramatically shifted after the Iranian Revolution and the fall of the Pahlavi dynasty in 1979. Iran immediately adopted a starkly anti-Israel stance. Ayatollah Khomeini, the new leader, was dissatisfied with Reza's socio-economic policies, particularly his close ties with the United States and Israel and reliance on oil revenues. Khomeini viewed Israel as a colonial state and illegitimate, seeing Reza's engagement with Israel as a violation of Islamic principles and Iranian social customs. Furthermore, Iran found itself at a crossroads with Sunni-majority countries that were increasingly aligning with the United States, a close ally of Israel. The relationship further soured when, in 1979, Israel reportedly owed Iran about $1 billion for business conducted before the Iranian Revolution. A significant portion of this debt was for oil purchased by Israel, with the revolution's victory by the Pahlavi enemies, Israel and its companies decided against repaying this debt to Iran. Ultimately, Iran sought a return to Islamic traditions and severed all official ties with Israel. Iran no longer recognized Israeli passports, and Iranian passport holders were prohibited from traveling to occupied Palestine. The Israeli embassy in Tehran was closed and handed over to the Palestine Liberation Organization.
In the 1980s, there was a brief period where a small window of the relationship opened between Iran and Israel, underpinned by a $75 million arms deal during Operation Karang. However, when Khamenei succeeded Khomeini as Iran's supreme leader, tensions escalated significantly. Khamenei vehemently described Israel as a cancerous tumor in the heart of the Islamic world that needed to be eradicated. Furthermore, President Ahmadinejad also infamously declared that Israel should be wiped off the map. On the other hand, Iran officially recognizes Palestine as a state and rejects the two-state solution despite the cultural and historical differences between Iran and Palestine. Iran is predominantly a Shia Muslim country, whereas the majority of Palestinians are Sunni Muslims. Nevertheless, Iran views the Israel-Palestine conflict as a struggle against colonization, aligning with the anti-Israel narrative prevalent in the Muslim world. Iran initiated Quds Day, observed on the last Friday of Ramadan, as a day of opposition to the celebration of Jerusalem Day. Iran's support for Palestine extends to training numerous Palestinian militants and providing a substantial arsenal for use against Israel. Iran's unwavering support is particularly evident with Hamas and other Palestinian jihadist organizations, offering financial aid, weapons and training. The relationship between Hamas and Iran strengthened in 1992 after Israel deported hundreds of Palestinians, including Hamas leaders, to Lebanon. In Lebanon, Hamas received military training from Hezbollah and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. Beyond supporting Hamas and militant groups in Gaza, Iran expanded its influence by forming a network known as the Axis of Resistance. This is an informal political and military coalition opposing Zionism and Western influence, including the Syrian Arab Republic, the Shia militant group Hezbollah in Lebanon, and various militant groups in Palestine. Iran's hostility has not gone unanswered by Israel. Israel has maintained relationships with its rivals such as Saudi Arabia and the United States. In opposition to Iran's nuclear program, Israel has taken assertive actions including attacking Iranian nuclear facilities, assassinating Iranian nuclear scientists and launching cyber attacks that crippled Iran's nuclear infrastructure. Over the years, there have been numerous sabotage attacks against Iran's nuclear and military facilities, widely attributed to Israel. These attacks have targeted not only personnel, but also several prominent scientists. Being a nuclear scientist in Iran has become synonymous with constant danger. In the past decade, at least five Iranian scientists have died in car bombings and shootouts. What's more, Israeli leaders such as Netanyahu have even deemed such attacks as justified. It's not only nuclear facilities that Israel has targeted. Iranian gasoline stations have also been attacked. Most notably, on December 18, 2023, the majority of Iran's gasoline stations were rendered inoperative due to a cyber attack, suspected to be linked to Israel. This allegation was made by Iran's oil minister, Javed Oji. Fundamentally, the tension between Iran and Israel is not limited to ideology or proxy groups. Both are suspected of being behind a series of prolonged attacks against each other's interests, both within and outside their territories, though they publicly deny such involvement. Israel, believed to possess dozens of nuclear weapons covertly, has vowed never to allow Iran to develop a nuclear bomb. Is normalization a possibility? Considering that several Arab nations in the Middle East have chosen to normalize relations with Israel to garner more support from the West, as seen through the Abraham Accords, it's a question worth pondering. For instance, the United States has been actively mediating a potential agreement between Saudi Arabia 
and Israel, even though Saudi Arabia and Iran, which have had a strained relationship since 2016, are beginning to normalize ties, the same cannot be said for Iran's relationship with Israel. Recently, Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi vociferously condemned the efforts of Arab nations to normalize relations with Israel. He argues that normalization with the Zionist regime does not create security. Moreover, the prospects of normalization with Israel have been further delayed following a series of attacks on Gaza, implying that restoring relations with Israel is next to impossible. Indeed, it is crucial to create a shared sense of security, as was the case in past decades. However, the current landscape is complicated and vastly different from the past. Why? Today, the focus is on competition for dominance and power in the Middle East rather than seeking support. For example, Iran opposes the hegemony of the United States in the Middle East, while Israel consistently rejects any efforts to withdraw American troops from the region. This indicates that both countries have been engaged in a low-level war for over a decade, with no signs of change in sight.